this is a KS0108 GLCD display being operated by an MSP G2553 TI microprocessor and being controlled by a Sony remote control. I chose the Sony remote control because it sends 12 data bits instead of uh, the NEC remote that sent 32 data bits. It was easier to decode the information in the short amount of time between sc screen updates. On the proto board to the left, we got the MSP G2553 microcontroller chip, and to the right of it are two shift registers, and they are 74HC595 registers. Uh, they're TTL voltage red, uh, shift registers, but with the MSP430 running at uh, above 3.2 volts, they read uh, the high and the low signals just fine, so there's no need for a level converter. On the far right is a infrared receiver receiving a 38 to 40 kilohertz signal. On the left, you see the LED that's used for current stabilization uh, and stepping from 5 volts down to the MSP 430's 3.5 volt power I needed to regulate the current and the LED helps stabilize it. I used a bipolar junction transistor and a pot to give me uh, the voltage control and it's pretty stable. Uh, I have battery backup with a blocking diode to prevent back charging and the system uh, will normally run with the MSP430 running uh, at about 3.3 volts with the MSP430 not running it goes up to about 3.55 uh, the fuse is for safety sake I had a previous clock with its own switching power supply that melted down because I didn't have a fuse with the power transistor unsoldering itself so now I fuse uh, my experiments at about a half an amp and in reality uh, the whole system draws about 50 milliamps so it doesn't draw much power at all on the back of the proto board you can see my not so fantastic soldering skills uh, anything that kind of holds a joint together. I have a lot of issue soldering uh, joints a tenth of an inch apart with the standard soldering iron but uh, for the most part it went alright. The big uh, daughter board on the bottom left is from an emergency siren and I adapted it to run with this board. It's a little tricky because uh, it receives a signal voltage to turn it on and to shut it back off it needs the same signal voltage applied for three seconds so that made programming a little bit interesting this is the clock in nighttime mode between 8 p.m. and 6 a.m. the background goes dark with the letters being brightly lit from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. the background is bright and the letters are darkly lit this is so the clock puts out less light at night and doesn't disturb me in my sleep. The clock supports military time as well as standard AM PM. The clock uh, allows custom phrases to be put with the day of the week. For example, I've put Hello World here and it's going to go on Saturday's uh, display. I originally uh, made it so I could add text a certain day of the week so I could remember to take trash out on Thursdays. Uh, but if you have other memos or messages you want to put on there, it works out well for that. This is the settings page. And if you look at the third line down on set alarm, you see WD. 
WD is for weekdays. I could set it to Y for yes, and the alarm will only go off on uh, Monday through Friday mornings. So I don't have to reset the alarm on the weekends or shut it off. Uh, I could just leave it alone, and it will only go off on weekdays. I don't really believe in snooze buttons, but I believe that the alarm should be able to be shut off or to skip a morning. So if you wake up before the alarm it goes off in the morning, uh, you could just press a button on the remote control and the alarm will stay off and reset itself for the next day. So if the alarm was set at 535, at 536 it resets itself to go off the next day unless it's the next day is a Saturday and you don't want it to go off. The clock has no buttons on it. It does have one jumper to silence the alarm uh, because if I turn it on without batteries in it, the battery backup in it, the alarm goes off. So I just pull the jumper out and then push it back in and everything's fine. You don't have to use the backup batteries and if you do put them in there's no current drain on the backup batteries unless there's a power failure. On the alarm, it, I mean, excuse me, on the remote control, it only uses the buttons 2, 4, 5, 6, and 8. 2 and 8 are up and down, 4 and 6 are right and left, and 5 is enter. As you can see, there's a lot more buttons than that on this remote control. Uh, it's overkill, but the amplifier it went to blew up, so it was an extra and just sitting around, I decided to use it. Last thing, uh, the clock uses a crystal which is on the upper right hand side about the size of a grain of sand and even though it's the same one that comes with the MSP430 kit I decided to order extras so I ordered two from element 14 and they are not a lot of fun to solder in. This is the one that I soldered onto the launch pad board which I can't get a very clear image of and there's the one I soldered onto the proto board which also was not a lot of fun